Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going back to the world of the Law of One. But we are going to explore what Ra says about the Kundalini, the energy centers, and the seven bodies, and how to awaken these energy centers, and what they mean. I've talked about energy centers and chakras on many different episodes. I have multiple meditations created. One gigantic energy meditation. I have an individual meditation for each chakra. I have a transurfing related meditation related to the way that they consider the energy meridians. It's always good to listen to Dr. Joe Dispenza who talks about the energy centers. There's science to it. It's a real thing. I've had my Kundalini awakened. I have vastly expanded my life in many ways by understanding the nature of these energy centers and how they work. I think that by understanding it, we can access intelligent energy. So there's a lot of interesting concepts to discuss in this. Now, if this is your first time hearing about the law of one, the law of one is a channeled material from 1981 through 1984. There were three people that were involved in the channeling. One would be completely unconscious, essentially. One would be the scribe and one would ask questions. And it was done in a scientific manner. The information is doctoral level metaphysics, very difficult for some people to understand. When I first started reading some of this, it would be very difficult to even listen to. I've tried to simplify it so it's easier to understand as I understand it. I am definitely not an expert on it. I am not on the Aaron Abke level, but I'm continuing to learn and expand my knowledge. And doing these podcasts helps me to understand as well. When I have people say, what is the law of one say about the Kundalini? Well, I'm, let's take a look and see what we can find out because there's a, a lot more to it than what I've read in other systems. You can read about it in yoga. It's very interesting. There's clearly energy centers in our body. Perhaps there's 226 or 13 or 8 or 20,000. Who knows? But let's look at what the law of one says. To begin with, before we talk about the energy centers, I would say that the seven bodies would be another concept I think there is a differentiation between the rays and the ray bodies. So the first thing to understand is that one of the preconditions for space-time incarnate existence is the sum form of a body complex. You live in a body, I live in a body, and each body offers a vehicle for learning, movement, and experience in a particular environment. And there are seven basic bodies, one of which we inhabit for use in this density. They move from less to more densely packed with light. The seven bodies have been given different names and meanings in different systems throughout history. Brief descriptions, mostly in Ra's words of the seven bodies when viewed from the human standpoint, follow in that the red ray body, the unconstructed material of the body, the elemental body without form, the chemical body, not however the biological system of bone, tissue, organs, muscles, nerves, hormones, electrochemical impulses, and so forth. That is the human physical body. This basic unformed material body is important to understand, for there are healings which may be carried out by the simple understanding of the elements present in the physical vehicle. Then there's the orange ray body, and this is the purely physical vehicle complex formed without self-awareness the body in the womb, before the spirit mind complex enters. This body may live without the inhabitation of the mind and spirit complexes. However, it seldom does so. The yellow ray body, that is in activation within third density incarnation. The physical vehicle we now know is integrated with mind and spirit. It is equal to the physical illusion. Now, the following higher bodies, often referred to as subtle bodies, are available 
to a third density entity, Ross says, but there is skill and discipline needed in order to avail the self of the more advanced or lighter vehicles. They are not necessary for third density work, but are useful to the adept. Ra offers some familiar names for the higher bodies that correlate to some spiritual teachings. It is noteworthy, though, that as this realm of exploration is very subtle and mysterious, different schools of thought may use the same terms to describe different bodies or experiences. Discernment is suggested in drawing correlations to other systems that describe these bodies. There's the green ray body that is a lighter body packed more densely with life called by some teachings the astral body. It is the body that will be activated and enjoyed by those in the fourth density cycle of experience. The blue ray body is a body of light which may also be called the Devakonic body. There are many other names for this body, especially in the Indian sutras, due to much cultural exploration of this topic. Then there's the indigo ray body, the etheric or gateway or form maker body described as the analog for intelligent energy and being intelligent energy. In this body, form is substance. We may see it as being made of light, as it may mold itself as it desires. This is the first body activated upon what we call death or cessation of the yellow ray body. The entity in between incarnations will remain in this body until the next incarnation commences in a body appropriate for that density of experience. The indigo body also plays a critical role in health and healing, adopting the desired configuration and manifesting it in the yellow ray body. The violet ray body may perhaps be understood as what some call the Buddha body or that body which is complete. It is extremely close to unity with all that there is. It is also the body activated during the anomalous moments of harvest in order to gauge the harvestability of the entity. Ross says in the 105th session, each mind, body, spirit or mind, body, spirit complex has an existence simultaneous with that of creation. It is not dependent upon any physical vehicle. However, in order to evolve, change, learn and manifest the creator, the physical vehicles appropriate to each density are necessary. Your query implied that physical vehicles accelerated growth. The more accurate description is that they permit growth. Your mind, body, spirit complex dwells within a hierarchy of vehicles and retains, therefore, the shell shape of field and the intelligence of each ascendingly intelligent or balanced body. Ra goes on to explain the energy centers. So the energy centers are the seven rays, the centers or circuits of consciousness that filter and process the love light energy of the one creator that comes through both the south and north poles of the energy systems. They have electromagnetic and metaphysical characteristics and intersect with the fields of mind, body and spirit. Each energy center or ray or chakra is a hierarchical aspect of consciousness that vibrates with unique expressions, understandings, and as Ra describes it, speeds of rotation arranged on a spectrum of true color vibration. The energy centers describe the journey of all life experiences from red to yellow ray. Each experience, Ra says in the 49th session, will be sequentially understood by the growing and seeking mind-body-spirit complex, first in terms of survival, red ray, then in terms of personal identity, orange ray, then in terms of social relations, yellow ray, then in terms of universal love, the green ray, then in terms of how the experience may beget free communication in the blue ray, then in terms of how the experience may be linked to universal energies in the indigo ray, and finally, in some terms of the sacramental nature of each experience in the violet ray. The energy can be reduced by partial blockage or imbalances 
of an energy center or it can be totally stopped by full blockage or lack of activation each entity is born with all seven centers in potentiation or in latent unactivated form via the use of experiential data in the current incarnation as well as work in previous incarnations the centers become activated or reactivated one by one an entity can examine its thoughts feelings emotions and and least of all its behavior as indicators in determining which centers are connected to the particular experience in the revealing of self to self through disciplined work in consciousness over time the energy centers become crystallized forming unique regularized structures able to deliver high energy voltage for service seeking sexual energy transfer and all energy expenditures in my interview with Jim McCarty he explained that Ra when it became a full social memory complex there was a sexual energy transfer component it's interesting this is also discussed by Drunvalo Melchizedek in his book on the secrets of the flower of life in discussions of Egyptian Tantra systems which is related to the law of one which is incredibly interesting we can talk about the Merkaba in other episodes each energy center has a wide range of rotational speed or as it may be seen more clearly in relation to color brilliance the more strongly the entity concentrates its will upon and refines or purifies each energy center the more the will uses the catalyst of that corresponding portion of life experience the more brilliant or rotationally active each energy center will be in the 42nd session Don Elkins asks Ra how can an individual assess what energy centers within its being are activated and in no immediate need of further attention and which energy centers are not activated and are in our need of immediate attention Ra says I am Ra the thoughts of an entity its feelings or emotions and least of all its behaviors are the signpost for the teaching learning of self by self in the analysis of one's experiences of a diurnal cycle an entity may assess what it considers to be inappropriate thoughts behaviors feelings and emotions in examining these inappropriate activities of mind body and spirit complexes the entity may then place these distortions in the proper vibrational ray and thus see where work is needed these chakras are notes in the song of self that when activated and balanced function together to form a melody raw stresses repeatedly that the goal in working with the energy centers is not the maximal activation of each but rather the fluid moment by moment balancing of the centers in the 54th session Elkin says let me make an analogy that I have just thought of a seven stringed musical instrument may be played by deflecting each string a full deflection and releasing it and getting a note to produce music is this correct Ross says this is correct in the balanced individual the energies lie waiting for the hand of the Creator to pluck the harmony as the energy centers begin to be activated to a higher extent more of the content of experience during incarnation deals with the lessons of love Ra seemed to prefer the terms ray and center but was willing to work with Sanskrit term chakra it is worth noting that there are various traditions and systems that describe the system of chakras in differing ways some have similarities to Ra's descriptions but Ra offers unique information on the quality and function of these energy centers the red ray root chakra center of survival sexual reproduction and the fundamental vitality of self this ray receives the life-giving prana or intelligent energy from the earth so it's an interesting way of understanding it is the energy of the earth is coming in through the root that's why you see that a lot of people have to root themselves when they eliminate energy 
It's interesting, Tail Swan teaches that there are no imbalances that you can maximize all of your energy centers. And I kind of agree with her, but Ra insists more on balance. When explaining the orange race, sac sacral chakra, center of personal emotional identity, expression of power on an individual basis, and relationship of self to other self. The yellow ray is the solar plexus chakra, the center of identity in groups and power relationships in among groups. The green ray or heart chakra, center of the universe or universal unconditional love, acceptance and non-judgment and healing, the key to protection and the springboard to intelligent infinity. Activation of this ray signals the time at which incarnation ceases to be automatic. 5. Blue ray, throat chakra, center of wisdom, light, honesty, and clarity and inspiration. First true spiritual ray in that all transfers are of a nature which has integrated mind, body, and spirit in self-knowing. Blue ray communicates to others this entirety of beingness and is the first center to radiate without necessity of response. The first giving beyond green ray is the giving of acceptance or freedom. This allowing the recipient of blue ray energy transfer the opportunity for a feeling of being accepted, thus feeling that other self to express itself to the giver of this ray. The sixth ray, the indigo ray, the third eye chakra, is the gateway to intelligent infinity, a center of faith, of the adept, of magical workings, prayerful attention, and the radiance of being, the work of spirit, the ray of intelligent energy and infinite possibilities, fed by the disciplines of the personality. The seventh or violet ray, or the crown chakra, is vibratory essence, the sum or the energetic signature of self, a thermometer reflecting overall balance, an, an analog to intelligent infinity. In this ray is the spiritual giving and taking from creator to creator. Ross said of, interestingly, of General George Patton when they were talking about him, this entity was of a strong yellow ray activation with frequent green ray openings and occasional blue ray openings. For instance, when they're discussing people in their energy centers, you can see discussions in these channelings when they talk about themselves or historical figures. Now, I, I wanted to point that one out. This particular entity, they said, did intensive group work in administration, military organization, and war planning, thus his strong yellow ray activation. But he also frequently, according to Ra, felt love for others, or the self, or the creation, or all of the above, thus the green ray openings. And he have even occasionally turned that love outward to authentically communicate an integrated selfhood in a way that illuminated and clarified thus the occasional blue ray openings. And when Don, out of great love for Carla, was asking about her healing, because she would get tired out in these sessions if you check out my interview with jim mccarty they had to keep her energy going raw began their response by saying we salute the opening of compassion circuitry in the questioner this would be a green ray opening activation or brightening and in reference to carla raw says of her rays that they may be viewed as extremely even red orange yellow the green ray is extremely bright this is shall we say balanced by a dimmer indigo between these two the point of balance resides, the blue ray of the communicator sparkling in strength above the ordinary. In the violet ray, we see this unique spectrograph, if you will, and at the same time, the pure violet surrounding the whole. This in turn surrounded by that which mixes the red and violet ray, indicating integration of mind, body, and spirit. In the above examples, and, and many more strewn throughout this material, you get a sense of the tone poem nature of the seeker. However, fragmented, divided, and disharmonious, our, our notes may be we are symphonic pieces of music that tell a story of who we are. And that story shifts through various tones and moods as we change through the day even, as we move through chapters and challenges of our lives. 
and in the orchestra of self our energy centers open and close in correspondence to our thoughts and feelings and activities and each center expressing one of seven major notes with many flats and sharps and subtle gradations between and the more that we love and forgive ourselves integrate and balance our energies and discover the self as creator the greater our inner harmony thus the tone poem of self produces a euphonious sound or melody giving pleasure to the ears of many it's a very cool concept to think of it like that as proposed by Gary Bean in his book The Raw Contact Resource Series. When talking about energy center blockage, the discussion goes to distortions, and through distortions in belief, perception, or thought, an entity may literally block a portion or aspect of the intelligent love light energy moving into and through the energy system at any centered or combination of centers in partial or in full blockages may occur in the body the mind the spirit or in combination thereof and may manifest themselves in any number of ways including in various personality structures complexes and personas mental physical or spiritual pain and ill health the opposite of blockage is overstimulation or overactivation this is also unbalanced energetic dynamic. Blockage of the energy centers can happen at any moment. The depth or fullness of blockage depending perhaps on the intensity of the catalyst, but blockage is also a manifestation of pre-incarnational design. Some blockages in one session quoted by Quo, who is another of the channeled entities of the Confederation, Quo is channeled by Jim McCarty. And in one channeling, he says, some blockages that are looked at and are experienced are placed there by the self before incarnation, not in order to break through quickly, but in order to initiate a process of self-acceptance, self-understanding, and self-forgiveness that is far deeper than the issue that begins this process. Healing is either of self by self or with the aid of the catalyst of a healer is a means of unblocking and rebalancing blocked energy. Dreams may also yield clues to blockage and the means of unblocking energy. Blockage must be cleared, or in order from red ray upwards, the final purposes of clearing, unblocking, or balancing each energy center is to allow the meeting place of the outer and inner energies to occur at the indigo ray vibration, thus making contact with intelligent infinity and dissolving all illusions of separation. Check out my episode on intelligent infinity where I try to explore intelligent infinity. Even after that episode, I didn't understand this until recently when in my interview with Jim McCarty, he explains the way to access intelligent infinity is through the indigo ray vibration and that is done by balancing all of your energy centers at the same time ross says that the root cause of blockage is the lack of the ability to see the other self as the creator or to phrase this differently the lack of love it seems safe to assume that blockage could also be caused by the inability to see the creator in the self or in any aspect of creation I see the creator in everything. Uh, so I don't quite understand that when they say that, but Ross says, while it is a primary priority to activate or, and or unblock each energy center, it is also a primary priority at the point to begin to refine the balances between the energies so that each tone of the chord of total vibratory beingness resonates in clarity, tune, and harmony with each other energy this balancing tuning and harmonizing of the self is the most central to the more advanced or adept mind body spirit complex each energy may be activated without the beauty that is possible through the disciplines and appreciations of personal energies or what you might call the deeper personality or soul identity 
basic energy center blockages in the red ray complex in session 34 Ra, Ra calls this ray fixed it is not clear if it cannot be blocked or it can be activated and open to a greater degree some students of confederation philosophy believe that this ray may be partially blocked by survival issues the orange ray complex blockage will often demonstrate itself as personal eccentricities or distortions with regard to self-conscious understanding or acceptance of self blockage of the yellow ray resembles most closely that which can be called ego blockages in the center will often manifest as distortions towards power manipulation and other social behaviors concerning those close and associated other selves to completely unblock this ray each entity must love all which are in relationship to it with hope only of the other selves joy peace and comfort the green ray center blockages in this area may manifest as difficulties in expressing universal love or compassion the awareness of all as creator is that which opens the green energy center the blue energy center the blue ray center entities blocked in this area may have difficulty in grasping its own spirit mind complexes and further difficulty in expressing such understandings of self they may also have difficulties in accepting communication from other selves the indigo ray center these blocked in this center may experience a lessening of the influx of intelligent energy due to manifestations which appear as a sense of unworthiness that struggles to accept the reality of self as creator and blockages of the violet ray center the remaining center of energy influx is simply the total expression of the entity's vibratory complex of mind body and spirit it is as it will be balanced or imbalanced has no meaning at this energy level for it gives and takes in its own balance whatever the distortion may be it cannot be manipulated as can the others and therefore has no particular importance in viewing the balancing of an entity when talking about sexual energy transfer blockages raw indicates that sexual energy may be transferred between two oppositely polarized mind body spirit complexes during intercourse in this case polarized refers to the spectrum of masculine feminine energy within each of us raw says that the energy transferred may be likened to a circuit being closed they describe the transfer as a function of the male female ratio between entities regardless of their biological birth gender the male principle will transfer physical energy the female principle will transfer mental emotional energy the pair then are mutually enhanced each one offering each one receiving each one revitalized and strengthened in some way but these transfers can be blocked at various energy centers the red ray transfer of sexual energy random transfer having to do only with the reproductive system Ra does not speak whether blockage at this level is possible you can transfer orange ray blockage in this ray will manifest as a never-ending appetite for sexual intercourse with the objective being to unblock the baffled flow of energy in order to reach the green ray in the yellow ray transfer blockage will manifest as a hunger whereby the entity is probably unknowingly seeking to unblock the flow of energy in order to reach the heart center such an entity may seek intercourse with a green ray active being for this reason there's the possibility of orange or yellow ray energy transfer as a means of polarizing negatively one seeing itself as an object rather than equal other self the pleasure of experiencing humiliation and slavery or bondage the other seeing itself as a plunderer or master or the situation the pleasure of mastery and control over another entity the green ray transfer the four blocked if one or both entities have fear of possession of being possessed of desiring possession or desiring being possessed another possible scenario is that one entity offering green ray energy the other not offering energy of the universal love energy this resulting in a blocking or blockage of energy for the one not green ray thus increasing frustration or appetite 
and the Blu-ray and Indigo Ray transfer, no blockages may occur in sexual energy transfer at these latter two levels due to the fact that if both entities are not ready for this energy, it is not visible and neither transfer nor blockage may take place. It is as though the distributor were removed from a powerful engine. Now, when Ra talks about the Kundalini, after we understand these energy centers, the first concept is the North and South Pole. In the infinite universes, there is only one energy. It is what the Confederation calls love, light, or light, love, or intelligent energy. Ra says that the origin of all energy is the action of free will upon love. The nature of all energy is light. The means of ingress into the mind-body-spirit complex is duple, 54th session. What are the duple means of ingress? The upward spiraling energy of universal light energy moves through the south or negative pole of our magnetic system of energy centers. Now the downward spiraling inner light moves through the north or positive pole of our magnetic system of energy centers. We have talked about energy going up and down in multiple episodes on this podcast. I always try to mention it and make it as a part of my meditations. It's an upward spiraling and a downward spiraling light that goes up and down. That is what's dealt with in the Kundalini. That's what's dealt with in all of these energy systems and they are different. Now, the locus where these two energies meet within the system is the measure of the entity's level of ray activity. The locus moves upward as the entity becomes more polarized. Earth traditions describe the energy being raised as kundalini. Ra says that it may better be conceived as the meeting place of the outer and inner natures. If you've got a chance to try my Merkaba meditation, if not, I don't know when I'll be releasing this episode, but that in particular one is imagining the upward and downward movement of the energies and in a swirling fashion. So they meet in the stomach and you move it up to the heart. So you can simply do that right now. You can imagine the energies going through your bodies and then imagine them meeting in your stomach and then with your concentration, pull it above your solar plexus through the magic chakra right between your stomach and heart where you move from 3D to 4D. There's a little place right there at your solar plexus according to Melchizedek in his book, The Flower of Life. And once you go up to the heart, he says you're going into the fourth dimension or the fourth density. It's very consistent with all the law of one material. So here we will explore the two entry points into our system of this energy the two expressions of this energy and the two means of working with it. So in one question, what would be the recommended process for correctly awakening the Kundalini? Don Elkins asks and Ross says, we have two types of energy. We are attempting then to move the meeting place of the inner and outer natures, the meeting place of these two energies further and further along or upward along the energy centers. The two methods of approaching this with sensible method are, first, the seeding within oneself of those experiences which are attracted to the entity through the South Pole, the South Pole Red Ray. The South Pole is the Red Ray, or magnetically speaking, negative pole of the energy system, has a physical locus that is identified with the root or Red Ray energy center. That is... What is the energy being attracted to and through it? Ra gives the energy various names, including cosmic prana, universal light energy, the energy of life itself, the upward spiraling light, the outer nature. They say about this energy that its point of ingress may be seen as coming through the feet from the earth and through the lower point of the spine. However, this cosmic prana, the energy of life itself, doesn't just come through the red ray. It is attracted. The south or negative pole is one which attracts. It pulls unto itself those things magnetized to it, Ross says. 
in another session ross says the most important concept to grasp about the energy field is that the lower or negative pole will draw the universal energy into itself from the kamos and people say that butthole sunning is bad <laughs> this drawing pulling action may perhaps be the primary mechanism whereby we attract certain people or life circumstances to us as they are needed desired by our unique energetic configuration the same would hold true in reverse as we are drawn to others there is a great deal that could be explored on to this point alone including how much of this attraction is a function of pre-incarnational programming and subconscious desire this would mean that without conscious awareness or intention we are attracting people and situations to ourselves that precipitate learning and not infrequently suffering because we are not conscious of the attractive mechanism at work we may see that things are happening to us but the law of responsibility indicates that one's journey is a function of the operation of one's free will as we will explore later on if this attractive force works on a subconscious level how can it be enhanced or even harnessed by the con conscious mind on the conscious level this could mean setting intentions using concentration or visualization and other forms of strengthening the will i see awakening to spiritual seeking as an act of making this attractive force conscious and eventually directing it consciously of this energy attracted to us ross says that this point of ingress of the universal light energy is undifferentiated until it begins its filtering process through the energy centers so you're just getting just regular energy and then it starts to filter as it moves up your body as the point of ingress so it starts in the root before this upward spiraling light meets the red ray it has not been colored or prismed into the various aspects of our psyche and experience it is white light meaning that it is in theory the same energy of life that greets and is available to everyone on this planet before each person begins distorting blocking and coloring it but what is the filtering process in the 49th session ross says each experience will be sequentially understood by the growing and seeking mind body spirit complex in terms of survival then in terms of personal identity orange ray then in terms of social relations yellow ray then in terms of universal love green ray then in terms of how the experience may beget free communication in the blue ray then in terms of how the experience may be linked to universal energies in the end go ray and finally in terms of the sacramental nature of each experience in the violet ray this filtering of the cosmic prana constitutes the general experience of our lived lives in a physical world from our personalities to our relationships to our social identity to our bodies and so much of our minds this energy forms the walls of both our personal and collective reality and identity it is our outer nature the outer nature is affected and transformed by its meeting with the inner nature which we'll explore later how do we work with this energy continuing on the 49th session Ra also says each experience will need to be observed experienced balanced accepted and seated within the individual as the entity grows in its self-acceptance and awareness of catalyst the location of the comfortable seating of these experiences will rise to new true color entity we can read that as raw offering as a basic schematic for using a catalyst or to put another way basic instructions for how to use the material of your life and as an entity grows in self-acceptance and awareness of catalyst the location of the comfortable seating of these experiences will rise to the new true color the yellow ray entity will become the green ray entity the green ray the blue ray and so forth this is the work of transformation each ascent of the energy upward in the chakra system raises the vibration expands the point of view deepens self-understanding awakens the self from the dream and ultimately merges 
self with the Creator. The crossing of thresholds may be accompanied by challenges, crises, initiations, or even death and rebirth. Though the South Pole energy is not limited to the first three energy centers, working with this energy through the first triad is extremely important for a number of reasons, including those with blockages in these first three energy centers will have continuing difficulties in ability to further their seeking of the law of one. But remember we are talking about two sensible methods of raising that locus of Kundalini energy working with the cosmic prana streaming through the south pole is just one of the two now the north pole violet ray we've just talked about the red ray now the north pole violet ray what does that and how is it differentiated moving on to the second method we continue where we left off from that last channeling ross says meanwhile the creator lies within in the north pole the crown is already upon the head and the entity is potentially a god. This energy is brought into being by the humble and trusting acceptance of this energy through meditation and contemplation of the self and of the creator. This is the north or positive magnetic pole of the energy system identified with the violet ray energy center or crown chakra. What is this energy which is brought into being? Ra has even more names for this energy including the inner nature, the inner light, the inward fire, the polaris of the self, the north star, the guiding star, the birthright, the heart of being, the indwelling creator, the true nature of all entities. Is this the point where we become the god that Neville Goddard talks about? Well, we already are, but this body that we have of the violet ray is our god self, according to Ra. This energy is the home of the mystics. It points to the second or tandem aspects of awakening and raising the kundalini, the recognition that meanwhile, on the other end of the magnetic energy system, the creator lies within. This energy does not meet and come into the self as does the cosmic prana of the south pole. This energy is within, in the north pole. As Ross says, the crown is already upon the head. In the word already is the understanding that the crown isn't earned or gained, just as one's feet are not earned or gained. The feet are already at the end of one's legs. In the crowned awareness, the entity is, when indigo ray intelligent energy is penetrated, a logos. And the entity is when violet ray intelligent infinity is penetrated, one with the creator. This indwelling energy of the North Pole is brought into being, Ross says, by the humble and trusting acceptance of this energy through meditation and contemplation of the creator of the self as the creator of the self as being of infinite worth of the self as perfect as it is. What is the humble and trusting acceptance of this energy? This may be seen to be closely aligned with those qualities of faith, grace, and surrender. I read humbleness as giving over the personal will along with attachment to personal identity, to that which is greater than the individual self. One humbly recognizes that power and love and wisdom do not reside within the separate self per se, but rather those qualities of being come through the separate self from the creator, the all self. I read trusting as the opening to faith. We release the small expectations we impose upon reality so that reality may reveal its greater self. In this release, we let go of fear and resistance and are clinging to the mortal frame. We boldly take the great step into the unknown with no support but midair. We do not need to understand or comprehend, as Ross says. Indeed, we cannot understand or comprehend. Instead, we seek the keys to unknowing, we release control, and we trust. Ra uses humble and trusting as adjectives of acceptance. What is it we are accepting when we accept this energy? That is an answer best left for self-contemplation, but perhaps it can be said that we are accepting our deepest selves, accepting that which is perceived as positive and that which is perceived as negative, the light and the shadow, the infinite and the finite, 
we are accepting the moment in whatever guise it may appear. What I love about this understanding is that it communicates how the gateway exists within you, right now. The Confederation describes how various teachings can guide, inform, inspire, and clarify the path. Indeed, that is exactly what the Confederation is attempting. But movement through the subway is ultimately a product of using one's own catalyst in discovering that the Creator already within you, as Ross says, the material for your understanding is the self, the mind-body-spirit complex. And that Creator within, says Ra, is brought into being through the work of the North Pole. This work is, I believe, what Ra calls the study of being. The self is not a doer here, per se. The self is an I am. And when the heart is opened and the mind and body sufficiently balanced and the spirit shuttle awakened, the doorway to one's true nature is silence and stillness. The deepest experience of the inner light may be none other than the conscious resting in the neti neti of utter stillness and silence. The seeker abides and rests here. The seeker holds the attention in his holy place, allowing the mystery to work upon she who has submitted herself in the humble trusting. Without ever forgetting that there is ever work to do at the other half of the spectrum with the outer nature. To place one's attention solely on the inner nature without proper care to the outer nature is a fundamental form of spiritual bypassing. However, Ra indicates that through disciplined work over time, the lower centers can become crystallized to the extent that the adept then begins, Ra says, to do less of the preliminary or outer work having to do with function and begins to affect the inner work which has to do with being. As the adept becomes a more and more consciously crystallized entity, it gradually manifests more and more of that which it always has been since before time. That is the one infinite creator. Now will, when they talk about the will's attractive force, emanates from awareness of inner light. The will's attractive force seems to be a discussion in the Kundalini. What is the mechanism driving the work with these two streams of the one energy? The will of the entity as it evolves is the single measure of the rate and fastidiousness of the activation and balancing of the various energy centers, Ross says. So how do we understand this will? We can start by looking at the effect that the will has upon filtering of the universal light through the energy centers. In two different quotes, Ra describes this filtering process as being dependent upon two components. Now one is the point of ingress of the universal light energy is differentiated until it begins its filtering process through the energy centers. The requirements of each center and the efficiency with which the individual has learned to tap into the inner light determines the nature of the use made by the entity of these in streamings. We have addressed the filtering process by which incoming energies are pulled upwards according to the distortions of each energy center and the strength of will or desire emanating from the awareness of inner light is easy enough to understand. The distortions and requirements of the energy centers is the unique in various patterns of activation, blockage, balance, and internal structure, some of which may be pre-incarnatively set for duration of the incarnation, basically the configuration of your chakras. This is part of what filters that prana. It speaks to the will. Energy is filtered and pulled according to the entity's use of will. The will is linked to the awareness of the inner light, along with the seeker's ability to tap into that inner light of the inner light. Ross says, the inner light is that which is your heart of being. Its strength equals your strength of will to seek the light. Will strength equals awareness of inner light and ability to tap the inner light. What is the inner light? Your heart of being, your true nature. As you become aware of your heart of being, the very heart of you, of who you are, and become aware of the will inherent in your being, you become aware of the original desire. This is manifested in your desire, your thirst, your focus, your intensity. 
your sheer perseverance and fidelity to the path over the years and the testings. The longer you keep true to the original desire to persist in seeking the one in the face of distraction, confusion, dissipation of energy, needed periods of rest, etc., the more of that inner light itself, the heart of your being, is developed and strengthened. The law of one philosophy is saturated with communication about the shaping, sacred, self-authoring power of our will. In the 52nd session, Ra says, acceptance of self, forgiveness of self, and the direction of the will. This is the path towards the disciplined personality. Your faculty of will is that which is powerful within you as co-creator. You cannot ascribe to this faculty too much importance. Thus, it must be carefully used and directed in service to others for those upon the positively oriented path. Now, the reason we're talking about will is it attracts the upward spiraling light. As the self becomes more aware of the inner light and learns to more efficiently tap it, then it has the corollary effect of attracting and pulling the upward spiraling line of light, meaning that all conscious seeking you are undertaking the meditating, the contemplating, the attempts to open the heart and see the Creator in all things. This is increasing both the strength of the attraction through the South Pole and the type of attraction through the South Pole. To put it another way, your spiritual seeking or whatever your desires are aimed upon is configuring that which is attracted to you ever more a function of conscious desire as you become a conscious being. Consider that this is precisely what is happening in the initiation process that unfolds in the Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. In continuation of the quote above, the inner light, Ross says the Queen's Chamber position or balanced position of a group intensifies the amount of this will, the amount of awareness of the inner light, the in-streaming light upward spiraling from the south magnetic pole of being. Thus, this is the place of the initiate for many extraneous items or distortions will leave the entity as it intensifies its seeking so that it may become one with the centralized and purified incoming light. One does not need a queen's chamber position in a giant pyramid to perform this work. It is just a tool, but for the purpose of this, the queen's chamber position neatly illustrates the process. There we see the light gathered and focused like a magnifying glass, a concentrated opportunity to experience that which for the rest of us unfolds organically over time. And the process that unfolds in this chamber illustrates that surrender of the work in the North Pole. In the 57th session, Ross says, the initiation of the Queen's Chamber has to do with the abandoning of self to such desire to know the Creator in full that the puffed in-streaming light is drawn through the South Pole in balanced fashion through all energy centers meeting in indigo and opening the gate to intelligent infinity. Thus, the entity experiences true life, or as your people call it, resurrection. Quo, another channel being from Jim McCarty, also speaks to this and its corollary pull upon the upward spiraling light. Quo, um, which I found on the LL Research website. Check it out. They have all these cool channelings. This is from March 19th, 2000. Work in the discipline of the personality is indigo ray work, and it is facilitated greatly by persistent daily work on one's desire. For the more intense that the desire is, more powerful will be the energy moving through the gateway to intelligent infinity from above and the more powerful will be the pull that pulls that energy up from the root chakra and to the meeting of that inner light that is called by the metaphysical worker in consciousness. So each will receives the opportunity that each needs. Uh, consider, if you will, the path your life experience complex has taken. Consider the coincidences and add circumstances by which one thing flowed to the next. Consider this well. Each entity will receive the opportunity that each needs. Throughout all the sessions, Ra leaves so much room for ambiguity in the process of evolution, recognizing the uniqueness of all creations. 
the infinity of possibilities and the unknown quality of mystery out of which it all arises. Here, however, they make an exception. They speak categorically in the assertion that each entity will receive the opportunity each needs, not maybe or likely, but absolutely. Elsewhere in the material, Ra describes how that opportunity evolves as the entity evolves. They say that the opportunity is random and provided by the Logos for those beings early on in their development, beings who are not yet conscious, but as the path advances and as the self awakens to the inner light, that which is attracted will be less and less random and more and more according to the shaping programming forces of the entity's own will, desire and seeking. In the 54th session, Ra says the sublocos, such as our sun, offers the catalyst at the lower levels of energy. The first triad, these have to do with the survival of the physical complex. The higher centers gain catalyst from the biases of the human mind-body-spirit complex itself in response to all random and directed experiences. Thus, the less developed entity will perceive the catalyst about it in terms of survival of the physical complex with the distortions which are preferred. The more conscious entity being conscious of the catalytic process will begin to transform the catalyst offered by the sublogos into catalysts which may act upon the higher energy nexi. Thus, the sublogos can offer only a basic skeleton, shall we say, of a catalyst, the muscles and flesh having to do with, shall we say, survival of wisdom, love, and compassion, and service are brought about by the action of the mind-body-spirit complex on basic catalysts so as to recreate or create a more complex catalyst which may in turn be used to form distortions within these higher energy centers. The more advanced the entity, the more tenuous the connection between sublogos and the perceived catalyst until finally all catalyst is chosen, generated, and manufactured by the self for the self. I know that's a lot to understand, and sometimes that's why it's difficult to read Ra. It's as if we begin as children of the Logos, and as we polarize and evolve, we discover our own Logoic nature, our own capacities as co-creators. This process connects directly to the development of the relationship between North and South Pole, the inner light, and the outer nature. In the phenomenon of cymatics, I found that a metaphor that helps me to understand this, this is when sand or another malleable substance is spread thinly over a surface and a particular frequency is projected or vibrated through the surface. The sand forms different geometric shapes based on the frequency, change the vibration and the pattern changes. I see the will functioning as does the frequency vibrating the plate. The more the entity develops the will, the more that the will or the being itself tunes to a particular frequency, and that frequency then causes the sand to form itself into a particular geometric pattern. In other words, the vibration of our own will is, right now, intelligently shaping circumstance to conform that which we seek and desire. The more conscious our desires, the more conscious this process, the more our desires are known to us or unknown or conflicted or fragmented, the more that life experience will unfold accordingly. This is the dynamic of the inner light pulling to itself the upward spiraling light through the south pole. But that which is pulled to us doesn't generally appear as some amorphous energy. Rather, that upward spiraling light arrives at our doorstep in the guise of other selves situations and opportunities. Not all of those attracted, desired opportunities will be pleasant. They may involve loss, limitation, sacrifice, or some difficult facing of the self. In fact, the more that we strengthen the inner light, the more that the situations we attract are asking to face our separate identities in order to be born to our true natures. There is no experience which is not purchased by effort of some kind. No act of service to self or others which does not bear a price. To the entity manifesting commensurate with its purity, all things in manifestation may be seen in one way or another to be offering themselves in order that transformations may take place upon the level appropriate to the action. 
the crux on Sada is a part of the concept of complexes, Ross says, of the archetypal mind, the circle indicating the magic of the spirit, the cross indicating that nature of manifestation which may only be valued by the losing, thus the crux on Sada is intended to be seen as an image of the eternal in and through manifestation and beyond manifestation through the sacrifice and transformation of that which is manifest. When one merges this understanding with what Ra calls the law of responsibility, one sees how self-authored the journey really is, and one sees how powerful and empowering an act is to take its responsibility. There's a process then that Ra goes on to explain, which I could go into more detail later, of the inner seeking meets the cosmic prana. And there are two streams of energy that are balanced, and when they meet, and in the experiences, Ra says, of the mystical search for unity, the mechanical concepts of space and time need never be considered, for they are but part of an illusory system. The seeker who seeks the one, this one is to be sought, as we have said, by the balanced and self-accepting self, aware both of its apparent distortions and its total perfection. The purpose of clearing each energy center is to allow that meeting place to occur at the indigo ray vibration, thus making contact with intelligent infinity and dissolving all illusions. Service to others is automatic at the released energy generated by this state of consciousness. In another quote, Ross says, the light energy of all things may then be attracted by this intense seeking, and wherever the inner seeking meets the attracted cosmic prana, realization of the one takes place. The work of contemplating the self and other self as the creator is part of this process is basically what we're saying. As Ross says, the purpose of clearing each energy center is to allow that meeting place to occur at the indigo ray vibration. So what we're trying to do is talk about the serpent. So in the end of this, we're going to talk about what he says is the actual rising Kundalini. Now, the rising of Kundalini has traditionally been symbolized as the rising and uncoiling of a serpent. And according to Ra, the metaphor of the coiled serpent being called upward is vastly appropriate for the seeker's consideration because this is what the seeker is attempting. As described above, the inner light is calling and uncoiling the power of the cosmic prana upward. The crown is essentially saying, come here, you can do it. Come on, come on up, come on up. But here is where we enter into a very important cautionary note to this work of raising the kundalini or drawing the serpent upward. In the 49th session, Ross says, as an entity grows more polarized, this locus will move upwards. This phenomenon has been called by your peoples the kundalini. However, it may better be thought of as a meeting place of cosmic and inner, shall we say, vibratory understanding. To attempt to raise the locus of this meeting without realizing the metaphysical principles of magnetism upon which this depends is to invite great imbalance. And now using the confederation philosophy, there are three basic ways that you can interpret this statement. Uh, metaphysical principles of magnetism and balance one. Now the law of confusion or free will is utterly paramount in the workings of the infinite creation. That which is intended has as much intensity of attraction to the polar opposite as the intensity of the intention or desire. Thus, those whose desire are shallow or transitory experience only ephemeral or configurations of what might be called the magical circumstance. There is a turning point, a fulcrum which swings as a mind-body-spirit complex tunes its will to service. If this will and desire is for service to others, the corresponding polarity will be activated. It is these quotes that I want to point to because what Ra is saying is when you choose the service to others, there is an activation of Kundalini and that, that is just, just the point of choosing. And I'm telling you that I found greater power and I started to get activation of these energy centers when I made a conscious out loud choice. Now the strength of will is meaningless unless there's a choice. 
if a choice is made in a state of dynamic tension between polar opposites, wherever there is a choice, the opposite choice or energy as something of a natural law must be evident or present itself, otherwise it's no choice at all. This not precisely the type of balancing work that we do in order to see ourselves as creator, as 360 degree beings, but is rather the contrast provided in any given moment that allows for the magnitude of a choice to exist. For example, choosing between vanilla and chocolate ice cream likely represents a less powerful choice than choosing between vanilla ice cream and spinach, just as choosing what to entertain yourself with on TV will have less metaphysical importance than choosing whether to participate in war. Greater contrast equals greater power of choice and greater strength of will and vice versa. Those seeking to develop their will may design for and or attract to themselves extreme challenges that grant opportunity to test the intensity of the will. As the will develops, so too does the power to choose one's polarity, and it seems that Ra is indicating that the choice to polarize calls forth a corresponding amount of opposing energy in proportion to the strength of one's will or magical personality when making choices. Balancing opposites seems to be part of this. Each possible thought, feeling, choice, energy, vibratory state is situated on a spectrum within a field of completeness and wholeness. In a way, a choice is a fragment of the whole that is made possible by the dynamic tension described. In that field of tension, it is our honor and duty to make many choices and to choose our path, and that necessarily involves balancing that tension according to the Creator. Each choice must be balanced by its opposite in order to transcend our partial perspective and experience ever deeper wholeness in that moment. This is evidence in the discovery of the completeness within the mind. In the fifth session, Ra says, to begin to master the concept of mental discipline, it is necessary to examine the self. The polarity of your dimension must be internalized. Where you find patience within your mind, you must consciously find the corresponding impatience and vice versa. Each thought that uh, a being has, has in turn an antithesis. The disciplines of the mind involve, first of all, identifying both of these things of which you approve and those things of which you disapprove within yourself, and then balancing each and every positive negative charge with its equal. The mind contains all things, therefore you must discover this completeness within yourself. Whether we consciously seek that balance by performing balancing exercises or the universe seems to deliver to us balancing opportunities, any movement in one direction will need to be balanced with its opposite to the movement to continue. And that balance includes first seeing and then unconditionally loving that path or person or thing that is opposite, that is not chosen. In that seeing, the unchosen is viewed as part of the totality of self, loved and accepted. I have tried this and I'm still working on it, but there seems to be some power, even in something as simple as affirmations. You can find uh, uh, the opposite of the affirmation and becoming aware of these dualities. One potential way of elaborating on this is to say that any seeking of the light requires the facing, accepting, and loving, and integrating, and balancing the darkness within the self, within others, and within the creation. And this is where we have spiritual bypassing that can actually hurt you because you're avoiding the darkness. Now, the other principle that Ra discusses in the 52nd session, your faculty of will is that which is powerful within you as co-creator. You cannot ascribe to his faculty too much importance, thus it must be carefully used and directed in service to others for those upon you, the positively oriented path. So we see the balance here is that Ra is saying importance and he's de defining importance as an important part of balancing these levels of energy as we talk about in transurfing. In the awakening and rising of the coiled serpent, one is learning to strengthen, empower, and exercise their faculty of will. 
in this process more power or higher voltage energy is coming into the system this strengthened will and higher energy is helpful for the great work but this energy may also be hijacked by blockages and imbalances unattended to in the energy system thus a repressed or unresolved or unhealed blockage may grab hold of the will and wield it as it were according to the logic of that blockage as ken mcleod my favorite author of the book starseed transmission says finally there is one pitfall in meditation practice that you must avoid meditation practice raises the level of energy in your system in the form of active attention the higher level of energy inevitably brings you into contact with reactive emotional patterns if you now become selective and repress emotions pushing them out of attention two things happen the higher level of energy in your system flows into the reactive pattern making that stronger both the reactive patterns of the emotion and the repression are reinforced you end up splitting in two one part of you is capable of attention and response the other part becomes increasingly rigid and inflexible it takes over unpredictably whenever the repressed emotion is triggered by events or situation part of the work of keeping the will focused upon polarizing and seeking is simply the act of keeping the attention upon polarized and seeking now the other principle is discussed in the 49th session there's a correlation between energy field of an entity of your nature of planetary bodies for all material is constructed by means of dynamic tension of the magnetic field the lines of forth in both cases may be seen much more like the interweaving spirals of braided hair thus positive and negative wind and interweave forming geometric relationships in the energy body fields of both person as you call a mind body spirit complex and planets there are two as ross said sensible methods for the awakening and rising of the kundalini there is the work at the north and of the spectrum which is in short the contemplation of the creator and the self as creator on the other end of spectrum there is the work of the south pole the digging into the finding of the creator imminent in the grit of one's daily life experience relationships and family and sexuality and body health but the seeker is not limiting the experience to just those roles and identities these are all energies of the self ross says we see the so-called insanity which may often arise when an entity attempts to polarize more quickly than experience may be integrated we have advised and suggested caution and patience in previous communications and do so again over the hasty opening of polarization without due attention to the synthesized and integrated mind body spirit complex to know yourself is to have the foundation upon firm ground but it's best to end with quo who says in integrating the north and south pole energies quo when channeled by jim mccarty says the principles of magnetism have to do with polarity the strength of a polarized field is that strength which appreciates both positive and the negative poles of the magnet so that it is understood that there is a virtue and value in both that south pole and the north pole oftentimes entities who are thirsty and hungry for spiritual meat simply keep attempting to move higher and higher within the energy body upwards into the realms of higher communication high wisdom high faith and so forth without giving an equal amount of attention to that energy which is coming through the energy body from the south pole from the earth itself the group known as raw was suggesting that as one seeks to open the higher chakras it is equally necessary to continue to give full honor respect and attention to the health and vibrancy of the lower chakras as well and to appreciate and honor that energy which has come from the one infinite creator to the sun and into the womb of the earth and then from the earth up through the feet and the base of the chakra system at the base of the spine in infinite supply there needs to be a continuing and equal appreciation of this energy and of all that it suggests of mortality and limitation for indeed mortality is a limitation and the presence of a seeker upon earth plane partakes of this mortality and this limitation it makes a much sweeter thing of being alive 
and aware to realize one's limited tenure within the earth plane instead of scorning things of the earth because they are illusory then the one known as raw is suggesting that one embrace and enjoy and take part in the things that are fleeting relishing and celebrating the energies of each chakra sexuality relationships group relationships all of these energies are worthy all of these energies take daily thoughtful maintenance in order for each chakra to shine and be completely open to the energy of the one infinite creator as it moves from the earth in upward spiraling fashion only when this motion upward is fully seated and working well can the seeker then call through the gateway of infinite intelligence and intelligent infinity for that inspiration which comes from the infinite and invisible world of time and space in the 52nd session Ra concludes by saying when asked is there then from the point of view of an individual who wishes to follow the service to others path from our present position in third density is there anything of importance other than disciplines of personality knowledge of self and strengthening of will Ra says this is technique this is not the heart let us examine the heart of evolution let us remember that we are all one this is the great learning teaching in this unity lies love this is a great learn teaching in this unity lies light this is the fundamental teaching of all planes of existence in materialization unity love light and joy this is the heart of evolution of the spirit the second ranking lessons are learned taught in meditation and in service at some point the mind body spirit complex is so smoothly activated and balanced by these central thoughts or distortions that the techniques you have mentioned become quite significant however the universe its mystery unbroken is one always begin and end in the creator and not in the technique and that is the best summary i can give you of the teachings on kundalini given in the law of one there's certainly more material here but i did my best to at least break apart what I could find on the energy centers and the Kundalini. I didn't quite understand the chakras as good or as clearly until I started to study the law of one. I always imagined the energy was within my body. And then to have this idea that the root is attracting the energy and then the energy is coming in and that we're like a prism. We're walking prisms such a wonderful idea that we're all just walking around as prisms and these energy centers just have reflect different kinds of light it's hard to fathom and what does it mean and have you experienced your kundalini some people experience something crazy and some people don't neville goddard repeatedly talks about this sudden feeling where it shot up through his body and he could barely move while he was in bed he calls about this split of a mountain and makes several analogies that's talked about the serpent in the wilderness as moses talks about in the bible it's talked about in so much literature including the bible and it's talked about in the law of one so there's something to it it really helped me to start focusing on each of my energy centers individually if you're confused because a lot of meditations will maybe dedicate a couple minutes to one so i have designed several meditations focusing on each one individually because i had a point in time where i was really limited and my friend had told me it's your root chakra and when i really worked on it i was i was shocked because I thought, well, I have opened that and worked on that for a long time. I always think about it in my meditations. But I had truly felt an insecurity, uh, a lack of safety, this feeling. And when I started to do that meditation and individually and focus on the root, it rooted me to the earth. And what it did was it opened up that earth energy. So what's essentially happening here, there is an alchemy of energy from up above and down below it, it is an alchemy of both energies coming together and forming an energy right now most of it is in your solar plexus 
most of the people on the planet are in their solar plexus your your heart chakra can be activated and open but the the meeting point of these two energy streams from the earth and the universe is in your solar plexus we're trying to move that to the heart you can have your third eye activated this is not talking about moving that up to your third eye this is the the focal point between those two energies so i find that interesting all of the blockages that happen here is interesting the transfer of energy information all of it this is something that i will definitely be going back through and and listening to myself i still find it complicated i hope it provides some additional information if you were looking for and tell me your story of your energy centers and your kundalini put them in the comments i want to know we can treat the comments kind of like a laboratory and by sharing information with each other on what we've done using this information perhaps we can improve on our knowledge and make it even easier to awaken our kundalini and balance and awaken our energy centers in any case all episodes of the reality revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution